Hi guys, Roscoe Petrov here for Leland Fly Fishing, sitting down at Semperfly headquarters to tie a few bugs for the YouTube channel. Uh, today we have this pleasure of tying on the brand new, undistributed, un not unveiled yet, the new Nirvana on the Fly rotary vise. So, going to give this thing a test drive today. Uh, we're going to tie a quick little caddis bug. These are uh, nymphs that I usually fish on my Euro rig, something heavy, something that gets down fast, I use it as a point fly. I tie a lot of these guys. Uh, we're going to be tying today on a Moonlit Tagata number ML251 in a size 8 with a 3.5 millimeter pale olive slotted tungsten bead from Moonlit 2. So let's just get that in, up in the vise and then we'll get going here. Uh, the thread that I'm using on this pattern is the uh, 8 aught classic wax thread in medium olive by Semperfly. I'm just going to go ahead and get a little of that on here. Get rid of that. Okay, so this bead on there, the three and a half mil bead, is a pretty heavy bead, but in order to make sure this thing gets down quick, because we're going to put a whole bunch of buggy materials on it, we're going to add some extra weight to the shank of the hook. Uh, to do that, we're going to use, just a, I like to put a little super glue on the hook shank. I always wrap it with thread first so there's something for the glue to kind of stick to, but then just put a little bit of that glue on the hook shank. And then we're going to wrap the shank with you know a few wraps of O2O lead free wire so I just started about two thirds of the way down the hook wrap that all the way up to the bead break that off right there Use your fingernail kind of push that down and then you if you hurry push all of that forward there you go Take my pliers and just trim that guy off so it's out of the way. Alright, now the next step on this fly is going to be to add in a piece of embroidery floss. Uh, this is usually bought at Walmart for me. comes in lots and lots of colors. Uh, the one I'm using today is just kind of a caddis green color. You're going to want to pick off probably about 10 inches of this. And you're going to want to double it over so that you have about a five inch long piece in the end. And the two tag ends, so you end up with kind of a loop. You see that loop on that end, and then you got the tag ends here. You're going to want to tie those in and just butt them kind of right up to the back of that lead. So I'm going to tie it over long, and then I'm going to pull that down nice and soft. It's easy until that those threads line up with that. There we go. And now we can bury all that embroidery floss down and build the taper on the fly. So the idea here is just to make enough of a taper to know that it's tapered, but nothing extreme. Work a little bit of thread up to that transition of that lead there, or lead-free wire. Wrap that up with some thread. that wire roll out on me it did there we go it'll be okay okay just work for a second on that and then we're gonna do a dubbing loop we're gonna prep a dubbing loop anyways to go in between all the segments of that embroidery floss once we wrap that up there and the dubbing loop is going to start way back here at the very back of the fly. I'm going to use my loon shepherd's hook tool and double the thread up like this. Wrap around the thread to trap it there. And then bring the bobbin cradle around, and what I'm going to do is just rest the dubbing loop piece out of the way and half hitch this. And set the bobbin in the cradle, and now we are going to take this embroidery floss here and we're going to twist it. 
We're going to twist it all up nice and tight until it's totally tight. So we've kind of got a round cord. And then because we have the dubbing loop in, I can't use the rotary feature. So you're just going to have to hold on to that tight and wrap this forward all the way up to where you would tie in a thorax for the fly. So you just see how that goes. Make sure you keep that twist tight so that those ribs stay nice and pronounced on the segments of the body. And you can see how this material is pretty universally usable. You can use it for all different shapes and sizes of bodies. Okay, when you get up here to where you're going to tie in your thorax, untwist that embroidery floss. It'll help you tie it off flatter. It won't be as bulky at the tie-off point. And then trap that with a wrap of thread. A couple of them behind and a couple in the front. There you got that. So now we set that little bit of thread up for a dubbing loop. Now we're going to go ahead and wax that thread and then we're going to add a little bit of dubbing. Uh, I like to use dubbing with just slightly a little bit of contrast to the body color so that it gives it a little bit more depth. And you want something with kind of short fibers for this, maybe not more than about a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch. The dubbing that I'm using is actually a custom small batch dubbing that I got from a guy on Instagram under the handle at dubloop. If you like what you see, reach out. He might still have some available, might not. But anything you see comparable will work pretty good for this pattern. You're going to just stack this dubbing loop with some of this coarse short strand dubbing until you get a good little mountain there and a couple more pinches there because a lot of this is going to actually come out once we spin it up Now I like to use the bottom of my whip finisher for this technique just so it's soft and round and smooth. And then we spin that up and then give that a little bit of a brush to loosen up those trapped fibers. Okay, now we just wrap this forward on the bug and you want to make sure that this little dubbing loop wraps in between the segments so once you, once you start climbing up that bug you'll just be able to lay that right in between each of those segments of the embroidery floss and it'll stand to highlight each of those and give it a little bit more definition you can feel that dubbing loop settle in between each of those wraps of that embroidery floss. So then when you get up there to the thorax, just tie that off. Trim that away. So now you've got a very buggy body. You can take that, rough it up, pull some of that out of there. See what you got there. Okay, next step is a little bit of a thorax. We're going to do something with a different color just to give that thorax a noticeable separation from everything else. And today we're going to use this. Uh, it is called Straggle Legs from Semperfly in Copper Brown. And I'm just going to use that. It's like a more dainty version of the straggle string. A little bit more, a little bit smaller core, but longer legs. So I'm going to like that for what we're doing here. Uh, once you've got that tied in, just kind of try to not trap as many fibers as you can by preening them back each wrap. But you, we're just going to build up a big, or not a big, but a medium sized ball for this thorax here. Alright, I think we're going to call that good. Tie that off, and then we're going to add a soft tackle feather here because I love tying soft tackle feathers and I love fishing soft tackle flies. They give the fly a really good delicate movement that I just think the fish love. Okay, so the, fly, the feather that we're using for soft tackle today is from a sharp tail grouse. It's nature's spirit uh, 
premium sharp tail grouse if you want to pick some of that up. It's got some very unique feather patterns which lead to some good modeling for these kind of flies. Look like legs and such. So tie that feather in, trim off the butt. I like to preen these guys back, folded on the halfway point of that, or half, you know, fold them back on that quill. Then I gotta grab my little hackle plier, preen those feather fibers back, and turn. I'm probably gonna do, nope, I broke it. Sorry guys. Tie that back in again. Quill out of there. All right. Tie that guy in again. And trim off that waist. One wrap. And that is about all we need. Take that, separate those fibers. Fold everything back. We should be about there. Take a minute here and clean up that collar and give it a whip finish. Cinch that up and there we go. Finish that with a little bit of head cement. I'm going to use the Loon water-based head cement to make sure this doesn't come unwrapped after a fish or two. There we go guys. That's all there is to it simple little caddis bug. Use it as a point fly on your Euro rig or as a dropper under a big bushy dry this summer. Talk to you later guys.